All right, for more on this, we are now being joined by Dr. Reza Khanzadeh from Washington, D.C. He is a West Asia expert and Iran analyst. Dr. Reza, thank you so much for joining us on World DNA. At this point, talk to us about the implications here. How is the death being viewed uh, in Iran at this point, if you have any inputs on that? Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, so what's going on in Iran right now in relation to the killing of um, is essentially twofold. First is you have the ordinary citizens, um, really anyone who is not uh, either affiliated or connected with the Islamic Republic or anyone who does not pledge allegiance to the Islamic Republic, they could not care less. If anything, they're probably more happy that this happened um, because they see the Islamic Republic bankrolling Hamas and Hezbollah and the Houthis and many other proxies throughout the Middle East as a detriment to all the domestic issues that are happening inside Iran. So they feel this as another blow to the Islamic Republic and hopefully force them to shift more on the domestic issues. But then, of course, there are about 20, 30 percent of the population who do support the Islamic Republic and see this as a significant loss. But as we've seen in the history of Hezbollah and Hamas, and, and, and also with, with you know, Iran's, you know, with Iran's government, uh, like, for example, the, you know, the Quds Force uh, and also the IRCG, a, a lot of big name leaders, head ranking officials of these proxy movements, these, you know, military militias, they all get assassinated and then someone else steps up and this is a generational and generational move of future leaders um even even sinwar himself grew up in a refugee camp he spent 20 years i think in prison so he was raised in this conflict in this struggle and now we have thousands if not tens of thousands of future sinwars growing up in the same way with this year-long conflict. Dr. Reza. So it's, yes. Yes, uh, I, just from what you just said, I just wanted to ask, because certain world leaders are suggesting that it's a chance to end the war, but the statement which has come from Iran's side is that it's only going to strengthen the resistance. And as you mentioned, if one leader goes, there are more who come up. And Israel has been successful in eliminating several of the top faces that we saw on, uh, on record, at least in the last one year. But uh, if precedent is to be you know, referred to, you see more heads coming in when one is removed. So at this point, do you feel it's a chance to end the war or do you feel it's only going to strengthen the resistance as Iran is suggesting? I think it will definitely strengthen the resistance, mm. um, particularly because of the level of hopelessness and distrust and hatred, essentially, that is coming out of uh, those that have followed Hamas, those that are you know, a legion to Hamas, and particularly the teenagers and those in their 20s who are essentially orphans now because Israel has murdered and killed and bombed over 40,000 Palestinians, innocent civilians. And that is going to galvanize an, an even stronger movement. Now, putting an end to this war really only lies in the hands of one, maybe two individuals, and that's the Prime Minister of Israel, Netanyahu, and of course, the President of the United States, Joe Biden. But we've seen time and time again how President Joe Biden has told Netanyahu not to do something, not to attack someplace, to be more cautious, to be more careful, and he's never listened. Netanyahu has never listened right. to President Biden in this entire year. And your program earlier just, just you know, showcased how Netanyahu said this is the beginning of the end of the war. But of course, that is an open-ended statement. The beginning of the end could be two years from now, could be two months from now. But Netanyahu is the one in the, in the driver's seat to decide on when the end is. Right. Dr. Riza, you do speak that the onus to end the war lies on the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the U.S. President Joe Biden, uh, with Netanyahu clearly saying uh, that Sinwar's death will not mark the end of the war in Gaza. Do you think that Sinwar's death will act as an opportunity to perhaps renew efforts to agree for a ceasefire deal and the release of the hostages? I think that remains to be seen as... That's, there's, a, there's a yes and no answer to that question, because on the one hand, you have certain 
elements within Hamas, certain individuals within Hamas, particularly Senwa's brother, who there's been some rumors recently that he he might be next in line uh, to you know be the the face or the head of you know Hamas. But it depends on who the next leadership is, what kind of strategy they have. There could be this this type of strategy from Hamas where they're thinking it's been a year. Israel has really not shown any interest in a ceasefire to to free those hostages. So we have really no bargaining chips. They thought this would be a bargaining chip, having those hostages, and clearly it's not. Israel is not concerned about those hostages. They don't care about freeing those hostages. And their, their strategy up to this point, Israel's strategy up to this point has been to take care of Hamas and Hezbollah, essentially eradicate them. But if this, if this war continues in, into the months and hopefully, hopefully not into the next year or two, then we see this being as more of a strategy by Israel to just eliminate Palestinians, to just do this continued genocidal campaign to essentially eradicate Palestinians from that land. Um, so I, I don't see a ceasefire really, really coming to fruition unless we see other types of leadership from Haas step up and, and, and kind of be able to negotiate a bigger deal right. to where they could, you know, the, yeah, the, it could come to an end. Right. Dr. Riza, uh, like you mentioned, that it all depends on the Israeli Prime Minister, Ben Netanyahu. If you can shed some light on the broader intent of the Israeli Prime Minister, because we have been seeing uh, with Israel eradicating top leaders of Hamas and Hezbollah, uh, the ratings of the Israeli Prime Minister in Israel has also shot up. And do you think that Israel will perhaps tone down its operations in Gaza now? Because when the war started, the main objective of Israel was to eradicate, was to eliminate Hamas. And now we have the news of Hamas leader Yaha Sinwar's death. Right. So we see we see a couple of things playing out here. So Israel could tone down its military campaign in Gaza uh, based on three scenarios that simultaneously are playing out. One is uh, from from the from the northern front coming from you know Hezbollah, but then you also have from the southern front coming from the Houthis and then also from the east coming from Iran. Now, we're still waiting to see what kind of attack Israel is going to perform on Iran. The latest reports have been stating that Israel has decided to, to, to attack military uh, you know, facilities within Iran. And then how, if and or when Iran counters. So we would see if... If Israel does tone down the military campaign in Gaza, it has very little to do with them wanting to vacate or end that war in Gaza. It's more of just repositioning their, their own military strength towards Hezbollah, toward Iran, and toward the Houthis. And then it's really for them a chess match right now between four fronts to where they have to essentially reshift and you know recalibrate depending on where the threat is at its most maximum. Yeah, so... Um, yeah. We have your point. Thank you so much, Dr. Reza Khanzadeh, joining us on World DNA from Washington, D.C. Always a pleasure speaking with you.